Now, as gunshots echo across the windswept, snow-covered reaches of the wild northwest, Quaker Puff wheat and Quaker Puff rice, the breakfast cereal shot from guns, present the challenge of the Yukon. It's Yukon King, swiftest and strongest lead dog of the Northwest, placing the trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police in his relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. One King, on your huskies. Gold, gold discovered in the Yukon, a stampede to the Klondike in the wild race for riches, back to the days of the gold rush. With Quaker Puff Wheat and Quaker Puff Rice, bringing you the adventures of Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog Yukon King as they meet the challenge of the Yukon. Say, what's easier than falling off a log? Here's what's easier. It's fixing yourself up with a swellest tasting breakfast ever. Simply take a big red and blue package of Quaker Puff rice or Quaker Puff wheat. Pour out a crisp, fresh bowlful of delicious rice or wheat shot from guns. Yes, these premium king-size grains are shot from guns. Exploded up to eight times normal size to make them crisp and tender. Bigger and better tasting. Now top with fresh canned or stewed fruit and milk or cream. And say, do you know what you've got? You've got a breakfast treat that can't be beat. That's Quaker Puff Rice or Quaker Puffed Wheat. Hush! Hush on there! Hush! Constable Drake was to meet Sergeant Preston in a camp halfway between White Rapids and a settlement called Porcupine. But he had lost his way in the desolated area just south of the Endicott Range. He rode the runners of his sled, pulled by dogs, across the glare ice of a frozen stream. On either side, the perpendicular walls of a canyon rose to a height of 50 feet or more. Oh. 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 Presently, the constable saw a large opening in the south wall of the canyon. It was an entrance to a cave. Uh, might be a good idea to stop there, rest for a few hours. He shielded his eyes from the wind and studied the opening. He didn't suspect the two men inside the cave were watching him. They were known in Porcupine as Kent Carter and Jug Jordan. Jug, I know that man. He's Constable Drake. A lawman, huh? I don't like the way he's eyeing this cave. If he comes here and sees all the furs we've got stored, we'll be finished. And so will Conover. What are you going to do? What's it look like? Hey, Kent, you better put that rifle down. It's risky to kill a lawman. In this case, it's risky not to kill him. I'll adjust my sights. I guess that's about a hundred yard range. Yeah. What's he doing now? Bending over his sled for something or other. Uh, his rifle. That does it. I got him. First shot. He's dropped to a sled. I didn't kill him. He's getting away. Drop that lead dog. That's what I'm trying to do. You missed again. Hurry. Here, get around the bend. Yeah. Ah, confounded. My carbine's empty. Yeah, don't bother to reload. That lawman got away. Now we're in a fine kettle of fish. What do you think we'd better do, Jug? We can hitch up our team and go after him. Those dogs are a lot better than ours. Besides, we've got to unload our sled before we move out of here. Yeah, that's right. We'll just have to see how things work out. We'll report to Carno as soon as we get to town in the morning. Sergeant Preston and his great dog, King, were in camp many miles away. They had gone there to meet Constable Drake, but the constable was long overdue. Sergeant Preston had become impatient. He paced the ground near his small campfire. His mood was transferred to King. Guess you feel the same way I do, eh, King? Constable Drake should have been here hours ago. What if anything's happened to him? Might have lost the trail. If he did that, he'd probably go into Porcupine and wait there for us. You act as if you remembered Porcupine. All right, King. Take it easy, boy. I'm breaking camp. Kent Carter and Jug Jordan traveled through most of the night to reach the town of Porcupine. Oh, hold your husky. Ho! Oh. Kent, handling the dogs, brought the team to a stop in front of the community's largest building. It was the warehouse of the Conover Trading Company. We'll leave the dogs right here and go up front to Conover's office. Hey, Kent, the boss has someone in his office. There's a sled and dog team near the door. Oh, well, what about it? Look at that dog team. See that big lead dog? Jug, that's the one. Yeah, that... 
Constable Drake's team. Yeah. What's it doing here? We'll soon find out. Mr. Conover. Good we... morning, General. Good morning. Well, we got to talk. I'm busy right now. Wait outside. I'll see you in a minute. All right. We'll be waiting. Come on, Joe. I'm sorry we were interrupted, Peters. Well, the thing is this, Mr. Conover. I want to get a few of my fur pelts out of your warehouse. But there's I no... spoke to the man who's on guard. He said he couldn't let anyone in without your special permission. That's right. After all, Peters, I'm responsible for the skins that you've turned over to me. That is, I'm responsible as far as thievery goes. Yes, I know. I agreed to pack and ship your goods to the states where my associates will sell them. I guaranteed you at least $1,500. And I might even do better. Well, now, that'll be fine. But I've got to get a few It would involve a new inventory, new appraisal, new contract. Doggone it, Conover! I'm only asking for my own property. Read your agreement, Peters. I don't like your way of doing business. And in the future, you'd better do business with someone else. By thunder, I sure will. This is your first year here, Conover. But if you treat everyone like you're treating me, it'll be your last. <laughs> Contract. Contract. <laughs> Fine way of doing things. What's the matter, mister? Huh? I was made to understand that putting furs into his warehouse was just like putting money into the bank. But there's a difference, Dad Rabbit. A man can draw cash out of the bank, but once Conover gets his hands on furs... You want to take your furs away from him? Well, enough so as I can buy some blankets and things. Those, uh, your dogs? Oh, no. They belong to the man that's out at my place. Man at your place? Yes, the dog stopped at the house in the middle of the night. He was on the sled unconscious. Unconscious, you say? What's the matter with him? He's wounded. Someone shot him. You don't say. Who did it? Well, he ain't been able to talk. He's still unconscious, or he was when I left. Is he seriously wounded? I don't know. The bullet went right through. I cleaned the wound, and I'm doing what I can for him. There's no sawbones around here. You should report it to the law. What law? The wounded man is wearing a badge, and... He's the only law nearby. He must have come from beyond the mountains. Well, I got to be going. I got to leave these dogs here in town where they'll be fed and cared for. And I got to get back to my place and stay with the wounded man. What do you make of that, Chuck? It's Constable Drake. No question about it. Get along there. Let's go in and see the boss. Stay away during daylight. But, Mr. Conover, yesterday when we were in the cave, a lawman came down the river and stopped. Kent fired at him. Fired at a lawman? He's going to investigate the cave. You know what that would mean? He'd see all the furs we've taken there. Did you kill him? No. I hit him, but he fell on his sled. He managed to yell to his dogs, and they took him away. Hey, listen, boss. We just learned that he's at the house of the old galoot who just left here. Peters? Well, whatever his name is. Uh-huh. So far, the lawman has been unconscious. He hasn't been able to see him. But if he talks, he'll tell where he was shot. Then that cave will be investigated. Yes. Yes, you're right. Maybe we better stick to Peters and go back to his place with him. We can finish the job on the lawn. I don't want any more violence than is absolutely necessary. But it's a good idea to stay close to Peters. Go home with him. Make certain that lawman doesn't spoil things. Rafe Peters left the lawman's dogs in the care of the storekeeper. He saw them tied in the rear of the general store and then came around to the front where he met Kent and Jug. We got to talking about you, Peters. You know my name? Yeah, we found it out. We'll go back to your place with you. Maybe we can help you take care of the lawman. Well, now, that would be downright nice of you, gents. If he regains consciousness and tells where he was shot and who shot him, we'll go after the varmint. <laughs> it might collect a reward. Our sled's over yonder, Peters. If you're ready to go back, we'll keep you company. It's mighty nice. It was a simple matter to win the old man's confidence. Kent and Jug accompanied Peters to his house several miles from the settlement and found the lawman still unconscious in a small, warm bedroom. Both Tug and Kent, as well as Peters, were sitting near the bed at noon when a hard rap sounded on the door. Hey, someone's at the door. Now you stay here, Peters. I'll see who it is. Yeah, who'd be coming this way? It was Sergeant Preston at the door. Jug glanced over his shoulder, made sure the Mountie couldn't see into the bedroom, then stepped out and closed the door behind him. This is the first cabin I've seen for many miles, I... 
Thought I might get some information from you. Yeah? I'm looking for a constable. Name is Drake. You see anything of him? I haven't seen anyone. Was he supposed to come here? Well, I don't know whether he came this way or not. There's no snow on the river. The ice doesn't show footprints. Constable Drake, you say? Say, did he have a six-dog team with a big white husky for a lead? Last time I saw him, he had a lead dog that was white. Well, then that's a man. He was in town this morning. In Porcupine? Yeah. I heard that he was to meet someone. <laughs> Maybe you're the man. Is he still in town? Oh, no, he set out on the North Trail. Huh? He, uh... Come to think of it, there was talk of going after a crook of some kind. Uh, if you want to catch him, you can save time by cutting northeast from here until you hit the trail. You won't have to waste time going through town. Thanks, I'll do that. One king. <laughs> <laughs> Good riddance, Monty. Whew, that was a narrow escape. I wonder what you'd say if you knew that you were within 20 feet of Constable Drake and the man who shot him. <laughs> We'll continue our story in just a moment. Quaker Pup Wheat and Quaker Pup Rice offer these three important things you're after in a ready-to-serve breakfast cereal. One, flavor. Swell, nut-like flavor. Two, crispness. Tender, melt-in-your-mouth crispness. Three, nourishment. Restored natural grain amounts of vitamin B1, niacin, and iron. What's more, Quaker Pup Wheat and Quaker Pup Rice are the famous cereal shot from guns. Yes, huge guns are loaded with only the premium wheat or rice grains. Then these choice kingpin kernels are shot from guns to make them crisp and tender. Yes, Quaker Pup Wheat and Quaker Pup Rice are actually exploded up to eight times normal size to make them bigger and better tasting. They're puffed to perfection. Shot through and through with bang-up nuts-like flavor, too. Don't let anything hold you back. Get both delicious kinds. Quaker Puff Wheat and Quaker Puff Rice. Eat the wheat one time, rice the next. It's never sold in bags or bulk, but comes only in the big Quaker red and blue package. Tomorrow, sure... Try wheat or rice shot from guns for breakfast, lunch, or supper. And now to continue our story. Sergeant Preston and the big dog King headed northeast from the trapper's cabin on a wild goose chase. Jug Jordan stood in front of old late Peter's cabin and watched until the Mountie and his dog were out of sight. <laughs> That'll take care of the Mountie. Yeah, I gotta tell Ken about him. Uh, who is at the door, Mr. Jordan? Oh, no one important, Peter. It's just a fella asking directions. Hey, how's the lawman? Is he still unconscious? Yep. Now, you stay there in the bedroom and watch him. Now, Ken, I want to speak to you. Come out here to the living room, huh? Okay. Mountie, you came to the door. Mountie, what do you want? He was looking for Constable Drake. Judge, I, I don't like it. Relax. He didn't suspect Drake was here. I told him Drake had gone north from the town. Mountie's gone off in a wild goose chase. <laughs> He'll travel a long way before he sees Drake. I hope so. Now listen, Jack, I got something to tell you. Old Peters wants to break into the warehouse tonight and steal a couple of his own pals. Why? He needs cash. He wanted to take out a few pelts and sell them, but Conover wouldn't let him. So he's going to get them anyway. Yet we've got to change his mind. Like fun. We're going to help him get inside the warehouse. Are you crazy? You'll see that there's nothing of value left in the warehouse. You spread word through the town. Everyone who turns pelts over to Conover will be up in arms. Oh, take it easy, Chuck. Peters is playing right into our hands. Conover planned to burn down the warehouse sooner or later. We'll burn down tonight. Tonight? Go and tell Conover my plan and get us okay, then hurry back here. What is your plan? I'll go to the warehouse tonight with Peters. After I've left the house, you'll follow along with Constable Drake in your sled. I'll help the old man break into the warehouse. When we're inside, I'll slug him and knock him out. And I'll come to the door and help you carry the constable inside. We'll tie the two of them and set fire to the place. Yeah, I begin to understand. Ah, it's a foolproof scheme. After the fire, there'll be nothing to show that Peters and the lawman were tied up. 
It'll look as if Peters broke in, got discovered by the constable, and shot the lawman. How will we account for the fire, Sergeant? <laughs> Peters had a lantern. He dropped it when he was discovered. That's easy. <laughs> yeah, I've got to hand it to you, Kent. That's as slick a scheme as I ever heard. You go tell it to Conover, then hurry back here. Conover listened to the plans and nodded approvingly as he gave the word to go ahead. In the meantime, Sergeant Preston and his great dog, King, traveled overland until they crossed the route due north from town. They found the snow unbroken by the tracks of man or dogs or sled. King, if that man told us the truth, Constable Drake would have passed here some time ago. I think we'll head south, boy. Drake may have been delayed. Perhaps we'll meet him between here and Porcupine. One, King. Heading due south, the Mountie pushed on mile after mile, but saw no sign of his friend, Constable Drake. Darkness overtook him, and he continued on his way by starlight. He reached the edge of the settlement, passed one house, then another. Then King became alert. On the still air, he caught a familiar scent and tried to tell his master. What's the matter, King? Why are you stopping here, fellow? King recognized the scent of a friend. He looked toward a cabin. He turned and tugged at Sergeant Preston's pocket. You want to go to that house, King? Dogs in the rear of the house responded to King's barks. King wanted to go to them. He looked at Preston. All right, King. Go ahead. I'll follow you. The mighty husky streaked along the side of the house with Preston following. Tied to stakes in the rear, a number of dogs set up a cry of welcome. They all knew King, and King in turn knew them. Sergeant Preston recognized the largest and strongest, a powerful white husky. Why, that's Constable Drake's lead dog. Hey there, what's going on? You out there, leave them dogs alone. Who are you? I'm Sergeant Preston. Stand right where you be until I see if you are. And remember, I'm holding a gun on you, so don't try no funny tricks. Aren't you Maggie Caldwell? I am. And... Oh, glory be you are, the sergeant. Quiet, King. Quiet. Quiet down there, you critters. Quiet, I say. Glad to see you, Sergeant. Joe's gone to the cafe for an hour or so, but won't you come in and wait? Why, no thanks, my dear. I haven't time. I was coming in from the north when King got the scent of these dogs. Don't they belong to Constable Drake? I don't know who they belong to. Old Leif Peters brought them in here and asked Joe to take care of them. Leif Peters? He lives a few miles east of Porcupine on the bank of the river. Well, you can't miss it. It's the only house for ten miles. Did he say anything about the owner of the dogs? Yeah. The owner was shot. Shot? Yep, wounded. Peters left him at his place. You know Constable Drake? Nope. What's Peters look like? He's a sight older than me. Lean and stooped, his hair's white. He does some trapping through the winter. He's not the one I talked to. Hmm? That no, doesn't matter, Maggie. I think I'll go back to that house on the river. If you wait around a little while, Sergeant, Joe will be back. I know he'll want to say hello. I'd like to see Joe, but I... What's the matter, Sergeant? Maggie... Stand right here and look over that way. Yeah? Look at the rear of the buildings on this side of the street. What's that large building, the one that goes back farther than the others? Oh, that's the Conover Warehouse. It's... I say, it looks like two men are standing at the rear door. That's what I thought. What are they doing there? Looks to me as if they're trying to get in. Well, they are. They're going in. Glory be, what do you make of that, Sergeant? Can't be Conover himself. He'd use the front door. Besides, it have no business going into the warehouse at this time of night. I'm going to find out about that. <laughs> stay here, King. I'll not be gone long. I said stay here, <coughs> understand, boy? Sergeant, want me to tie him to one of the stakes? No, he'll stay. I'll be back in a little while. Joe comes. Tell him I'd like to see him. I sure will. That's it, Peters. Now close the door tight. <laughs> we can't lock her on account of the lock. He's busted. That's all right. Shall I light the lantern now? Yeah, you might as well. Get a little light in this warehouse. Then I can find the pelts that have got my name on them. <laughs> I declare, kid, I feel like a regular burglar. Conover will be fit to be tied tomorrow when I tell him I got some skins in spite of his ruling. <laughs> yeah, I expect he will be. Yeah. Now we can see what we're doing. Leave it right there for a minute, Peters. Huh? Well, all right, but I... Uh... Hey! The... Oh. Wait! Oh, another... oh. I had it old coot. Took two cracks to knock you out. What's going on in what there? The... Better drop that gun or someone might get hurt. Mounty! Right. Sergeant Preston. Get your hands up, Preston. Good work, Chug. Step right in, Mounty. If you feel something against your back, it's a barrel of my gun. Two of you, eh? What's the game? You'll find out what the game is soon enough. Take his gun, Kim. Right. 
Now you can turn around and look at me, Marty. I remember you. Yeah, I thought you might. I'm that gent that told you to travel northeast. If you're taking my advice, you wouldn't be in trouble right now. What are we going to do with him, Jack? There's only one thing to do. we got to leave him here with the others. The old man out? Yeah. What about Drake? He's on my sled outside. I left it back a ways and come ahead on foot when I saw this Molly moving up to the door. You can bring Drake in after we get pressed in time. Keep him covered. I got a rope right here. You think you can tie me without a struggle? You're mistaken. Watch him. Are you Hit him again. Yeah, yeah that got him. Fool. Did he think he could get away from two of us? I don't know what he thought. Get him tied and you'd better gag him so he can't yell if he comes to you. I'll tie him all right. Maybe we better finish him off now. No, no. It looked like he got caught in the fire. Can you finish tying him without any help from me? Sure. And I'll bring in the constable. I won't be long. Sergeant Preston's hat had taken some of the force out of the cruel blows of Kent's pistol. The Mountie fell to the floor unconscious, but not for long. Consciousness returned while Jug and Kent were still inside the warehouse. Come on, Jug. He could hear them up, talking before he opened his eyes. Bring the constable right in here and put him near these other two. You want some help? No. I can carry him all right. Is he still unconscious? He's done for I put him right here on the floor. His heart was beating when I took him out of Peter's house. He must have died on the trip from there. Well, it don't matter. All three of them will be finished in another 10 or 15 minutes. All set to start the fire? We better pile up some of those crates first, so we're sure it'll burn good. All right, well, let's get to it. This Sergeant here. Preston strained against the ropes, but they were strong and well tied. A gag in his mouth made it impossible to call for help. He glanced at Leif Peters lying on the floor nearby. And saw that the old man was also tied and gagged. Uh, Kent, we could take out some more of these pelts and load them on the sled and take them up to the cave up near the river bend. Now, we got to leave enough here so there'll be ashes. If there are no ashes, Conover can't convince the trappers that their pelts were burned up in the fire. <laughs> Those trappers will be downright sore. A pack of good it'll do them. It's in the agreement that Conover's not responsible except in cases of robbery. There. Yeah, I got enough stuff here. All right. Take Leif Peter's gun and fire a shot at the lantern. Here goes. Yeah, that did it. That's a shot that's supposed to have killed Constable Drake. Throw the gun down by the old man. Yeah. Hey, look at the way that fire is taking hold. This place will go up like tinder. Yeah, we gotta get out. Hey, what about those ropes and gags? They won't show. They'll be burned. Come on, let's get clear of here and watch the fire. Sergeant Preston put all his strength into a mighty effort to stretch or break the ropes that held him. The warehouse was a flimsy structure made of thoroughly dried out wood. The flames spread rapidly, leaping up the nearest wall and licking at the ceiling. The Mountie knew that his time was measured in minutes and seconds. <laughs> Meanwhile, King stood with the other dogs in the rear of Maggie Caldwell's home. He had watched his master enter the warehouse a couple of hundred yards away and remained almost motionless while he waited for the Mountie to return. Then he saw the smoke, and a moment later, flames. His master had said, stay. King had obeyed unwillingly, but now he wondered. He knew that fire meant danger. Should he remain where he had been left or go to find his master? Then he made his decision. He raced toward the rear of the warehouse. Look at him burn. No chance to save There's nothing we can do about it. Hey, look at that dog. Where'd he come from? King dashed through the crowd and watched the fire. The rear door of the building was closed, but the lock had been smashed. The door swung in when the big dog threw his weight against it. Hey, what ails that dog? Why'd he go inside? Hey, you suppose someone's in there? Maybe someone's trapped in the fire. Well, what's in there? Inside the building, King was at his master's side. Preston was tied both hand and foot and fastened by a strong cord to a heavy post so he couldn't squirm toward the door and gagged so he couldn't cry out. King was working on the rope when men rushed to his assistance. There is someone in there. Cut that rope. Right? Hey, we'll help you. Yeah. Make it fast. The roof will collapse any minute. Right. Come on. It's about it. It's Sergeant Preston. Yeah. Get that gag out of his mouth before yeah. I cut these ropes here. Willing hands whipped out keen knives, and an instant later, Sergeant Preston was free. Two other men are inside that place. You can't go in there again. Roof's due to collapse. We've got to get them out. I can go where you can. I'll help you. All right, Joe, come on. Joe, can you take that man? Yeah, yeah I can manage. It's Constable Drake. Take him outside. I got him. All right, get going. I'll follow with Leif Peters. Coughing from the smoke, the Mountie and Joe carried their men out of the inferno, and none too soon. The crowd began to cheer the heroic rescue, but the cries were stopped abruptly by the approach of the roof. That's the end of it. 
all my furs. Doggone it, I had a whole year's trapping inside that warehouse. Joe, cut the ropes and get Peters free. I have something else to do. Right. Just a minute, Conover. Where are you going? Uh, me? The law wants you. Sorry, Don't try uh, to get away. You men! All of you who had furs in that warehouse, listen to me. Most of them had been moved out. That's right, Jinch. I never had a couple of crooks move out the furs. He figured to steal them from us by making us think they were burned out. Now, wait just a minute. That's no use, Conover. Your hired crooks didn't think Pierce and I would survive that fire. Where are Jug and Pierce? I don't know. I don't know anything about them. I tell you, I have... They were here a minute ago. They just scooted out, headed east. We'll get them. We can overtake them without much trouble. And then, Conover, they'll hang for the murder of Constable Drake, and you'll hang with them. No. No, I hadn't. I never had no part of that. I admit I told him to start the fire, and I admit I planned to steal the furs. But you can't charge me with murder. Well, Conover, that will be for a jury to decide. Yes, King, the case is closed. In just a moment, Sergeant Preston will give you a preview of Wednesday's adventure. Fellas and girls, remember, delicious Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice now offer you, at no extra cost, a complete miniature model farm. Yes, 46 detailed scale models are now on eight different packages of the breakfast cereal shot from guns. You get exciting models like Big Red Barn with Sliding Door, the farmhouse itself, windmill that turns, and listen, that's Biff the Bull, just one of many models of animals to stock your farm. And remember, at no extra cost, you get as many as six models to a single package. Don't delay. Ask for Quaker Pup Wheat and Quaker Pup Rice today. These radio dramas, a feature of the challenge of the Yukon Incorporated, are created and produced by George W. Trendle and directed by Fred Flowerday. This story was written by Fran Stryker. The part of Sergeant Preston is played by Paul Sutton. They are brought to you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at the same time by Quaker Pup Wheat and Quaker Pup Rice, the breakfast cereal shot from gun. Listen Wednesday when Sergeant Preston and Yukon King meet the challenge of the Yukon in the case of... The crumpled handbill. Ezra Sims was with me when I went by launch to take two criminals into custody. When I saw my own words penciled on the back of a water-soaked handbill floating on the river, I knew that the outlaws were closer than I had suspected. But neither Ezra nor I realized that they were planning to add the murder of Ezra's wife to their list of crimes. Be sure to hear this exciting adventure Wednesday. For a delicious hot breakfast, eat Quaker Oats. The giant of the cereals is Quaker Oats. Yes, the giant of the cereals is Quaker Oats. Delicious, nutritious, makes you feel ambitious. The giant of the cereals is Quaker Oats. Say, boys and girls, do you want to be a star someday in sports and activities? Then start on good Quaker Oats breakfast tomorrow. Because nourishing oatmeal gives you more growth and endurance than any other whole grain cereal. Still less than one penny a serving. Quaker and Mother's Oats are the same. Be sure to hear the great new Peter Donald Show, Talk Your Way Out of It, presented by Aunt Jemima, starting Wednesday over most of these stations. This is J. Michael wishing you goodbye, good luck, and good health from Quaker Pup Wheat and Quaker Pup Rice. So long. This is ABC, the American Broadcasting Company. <laughs>